namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya prakritim purush oh text 20 prakritim purusham shaiva vidhyana divavapi vikram shagunam shaiva vidhi prakriti sambhavan material nature and the living entities should be understood to be beginningless their transformations and the modes of matter are products of material nature text 21 karya karana kartitve he tu prakritir uchyate purusha sukha dukkama karanam bo kritve he tor uchyate nature is said to be the cause of all material causes and effects whereas the living entity is the cause of the various sufferings and enjoyments in the world text 22 purusha prakriti prakriti stoti hi bhukte prakriti jan gunan karanam guna sangoshya sad asad yoni jan mashu the living entity in material nature thus follows the ways of life enjoying the three modes of nature this is due to his association with that material nature thus he meets with good and evil among various species text 23 upadrashta numantascha bharta bhukta maheshwaraha paramatmeti chap yukto Dehismin Purusha Paraha. Yet in this body there is another, a transcendental enjoyer, who is the Lord, the supreme proprietor, who exists as the overseer and permitter, and who is known as the super soul. Text 24. Ye Yaevam Viti Purusham Prakritim Shagunai Saha. One who understands this philosophy concerning material nature, the living entity, and the interaction of the modes of nature is sure to attain liberation. He will not take birth regardless of his present position. Text 25. Dhyane natmani pasyanti Kechit atmanam atmanaha atmana anye sankriyena yogena karma yogena chapare. Some perceive the super soul within themselves through meditation, others through the cultivation of knowledge, and still others through working without fruitive desires. Text 26. Anyetvam evam ajnataha strutvanye bhaya bhuya upasate te pichati tarantieva mrityum sruti parayanaha. Again, there are those who, although not conversant in spiritual knowledge, begin to worship the Supreme Person upon hearing about Him from others. Because of their tendency to hear from authorities, they also transcend the path of birth and death. Text 27. Yevat sanjayate kinchit sattvam stavarajangaimam shetra shetrajna samyogat tadvidi bharatar sabha. O chief of the Bharatas, know that whatever you see in existence, both the moving and the non-moving is only a combination of the field of activities and the knower of the field. Text 28. Samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishtantam parameshvaram vinasya tvavinasyantam yapasyanti sapasyati 
one who sees the super soul accompanying the individual soul in all bodies and who understands that neither the soul nor the super soul within the destructible body is ever destroyed actually sees text 29 samam pyasyani sarvetra samavastitam ishvaram one who sees the super soul equally present everywhere in every living being does not degrade himself by his mind. Thus, he approaches the transcendental destination. Text 30. Prakritya karmani kriyamanyani sarvasaha Sorry, give me more. Just, okay. One who can see that all activities are performed by the body, which is created of material nature, and sees that the self does nothing, actually sees. Text 31. Yadabhuta prihagvavan vam. When a sensible man ceases to see different identities due to different material bodies and he sees how beings are expanded everywhere, he attains to the Brahman conception. Text 32. Anadidvam nirgun atvat those with the vision of eternity can see that the imperishable soul is transcendental, eternal and beyond the modes of nature. Despite contact with the material body, O Arjuna, the soul neither does anything nor is entangled. Text 33. Yata sarvagatam shoksmyad akasam no palipyate sarva travas ditum dehi tatatma no palipyate. The sky, due to its subtle nature, does not mix with anything, although it is all pervading. Similarly, the soul situated in Brahman vision does not mix with the body. Though situated in that body. Text 34. Yata parkasa se atyakaha kritsnam lokam imam ravi shetram shetri ata krishnam parkasa yati bharata. O son of Bharata. As the sun alone eliminates all this universe, so does the living entity, one within the body, illuminate the entire body by consciousness. Text 35. Shetra Shetra Jna Yor Evam Antaram Jna Na Chakshusha Bhuta Prakriti Moksham Shcha Ye Viduryan Jiteparam those who see with eyes of knowledge the difference between the body and the knower of the body and can also understand the process of liberation from bondage in material nature attain to the supreme goal. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Jolly Mataji and Santosh Prabhu. And let me stop sharing, share my screen. So today we are continuing with the studying chapter 13 entitled Nature, the Enjoy and Consciousness. Some of the other, the Veda base seems to be down today and I wanted to read certain aspects from certain parts, but I'll have to see how I can do it otherwise. Um, so before we read today's verse, we'll say the Mangala Charanam prayers. Om Jnana Timirandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya 
Chakshurun Malitam Jena Asmai Shri Gurave Namaha Panchakalpa Turubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vashari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Namaham Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadhi Pastacha Deshatarine Shila Prabhupada Kijai so today we, we are going to go till half eight and half past eight we're going to have a presentation on the Bhagavad Gita by our children's Sankirtan team. Uh, these wonderful Vaishnav children have become involved in the marathon to help popularize the, the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. And they prepared a um, presentation, which they are presenting to people to encourage them to take Bhagavad Gita, live Bhagavad Gita, and sponsor Bhagavad Gita. So we'll do that at half past eight, and um, we'll see how much we can discuss today. So today's verse is, is a really, really important verse. He does... Um, some deep meanings and deep instruction in it. And we'll see how much we can discuss uh, without the availability of the Veda base today. I may have to read from my phone. So let's see how it goes. Anaditvam nirgunat pat paramatmayavam avyayaha sharirasto pi konteya Na koroti na lipyate. Word for word, synonyms. Anaditvat, due to eternity. Nirgunatvat, due to transcendental. Paramam, beyond material nature. Atma, spirit. Ayam, this. Avyaya, ha, inexhaustible. Sarirasta, api, through dwelling in the body. Konteya, O son of Kunti. Na koroti, never does anything. Na lipyate, noisy, entangled. Translation by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Those with the vision of eternity can see that the soul is transcendental eternal and beyond the modes of nature. Despite contact with the material body or Arjuna, the soul never does anything, no is entangled. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. A living entity appears to be born because of the birth of the material body. But actually, the living entity is eternal. He is not born, and in spite of his being situated in a material body, he is transcendental and eternal. Thus, he cannot be destroyed. By nature, he is full of bliss. He does not engage himself in many, any material activities. Therefore, the activities performed 
due to his contact with material bodies, do not entangle him. So verse again. Those with the vision of eternity can see that the soul is transcendental, eternal, and beyond the modes of material nature. Despite contact with the material body or Arjuna, the soul neither does anything nor is entangled. So this is a, a beautiful verse explaining uh, how a liberated soul, he has the vision of eternity and he can see that the soul has nothing to do with the material world and the material body. And the last part of the statement on this verse is particularly interesting. The soul neither does anything nor is entangled. So we all understand from reading Bhagavad Gita that we are the soul. We are not the body. So here it is said that the soul does not do anything, nor is entangled. So that raises the question then, so who is doing all that we're experiencing? We all know that in our daily activities, we are doing so much. But here it is said, the soul neither does anything nor is entangled. We know that the body, as Krishna is explaining in this chapter, the body is called Shetragya. And Krishna calls the body the field of activities. And we know the body, it is made out of 25 elements. And the body is material. The body or matter has no ability to be conscious by itself. And we know from the Bhagavad Gita that consciousness comes from the soul. So without the soul being in the body, the body is dead. It's lifeless. So we understand just from logical inference that without the soul, the body can do nothing. But here Krishna is saying that the soul does, neither does anything, nor is entangled. So what is happening here? How do we understand this verse? The body is matter. Matter cannot act by its own self. It is only consciousness and animates. But yet it is said that the soul is doing nothing. So who is doing? And then if the soul is doing nothing, why do we as the soul who transmigrate have to take karma with us body after body after body? So these questions may arise and we need to understand what Krishna is saying and how to understand these verses because it's it's very, very fundamental to spiritual understanding. So we raised a couple of questions thus far in relation to this verse. Would anyone like to their own understanding and reading of the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam and other verses like to explain what is this meaning of this verse? Prabhuji, I can try. Yes, please go, Rupa Mataji. Okay. So Krishna is saying the soul is not entangled and it does not do anything. Because in another verse, Krishna says the three modes of material nature does everything. And the soul, uh, under the three modes of material nature, the false ego thinks that I am doing. Karta aham iti manyate. So the false ego thinks we are doing like if i am doing some work i will say i am doing it so rupa has done this work but actually the three modes are either the mode of passion or ignorance or goodness has done the work not uh, the soul not my soul the false ego is thinking i am doing it 
So that's my understanding. Nice understanding, Mataji. So why doesn't the false, why doesn't the three modes of nature take the karma then? Why must um, the soul why must the soul take the karma if the call is soul is not doing anything? Because um because we the like like Krishna is saying, uh, we have a choice. Uh, we have a free will. Either we can be in the spiritual, and we can be with the spiritual energy or with the material energy. So because we have fallen and we are entangled with the three modes, and we so that's why the karma is on us because we have chosen the three modes and not chosen the spiritual uh, energy. Nice, very nice explanation, Rupa Mataji. Thank you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else likes to share their understandings of this verse and this philosophy? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, you know, like once the soul is a pure soul, and when we come into in the contact with the matter, then the soul is not contaminated, but then life after life, you know we collect all this karma. So the soul is pure, it's not touched by anything, but our karma, that way we need to cleanse the karma. So the, the more we come into Krishna conscious, the more we chant, the more we do bhakti, that we cleaning our soul, with the, the soul is not dirty, but we cleaning our karma. And then, you know, slowly, slowly that we come up to the, that, that, uh, conscious that we are not longer than coming to the transmigration because then we have that that realize uh, consciousness so mm -hmm. the soul is not dirty the soul is clean the soul is pure but that our karma that our uh, our consciousness that is uh, coming to the matter and then we create all this karma and all this come into the three modes of material nature and that's how we connect to each other, that's how we behave in a material nature. So one question for you. Thank you, Mataji, for that nice explanation. And, and it, it's, it's very, very clear and very much in line. But you, Prabhuta Mataji, every day you're doing so many, so many activities, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you think you are doing it? No. So who do you think is doing it? It's, um... It's a Krishna, Krishna, she's Krishna's doing it because we are totally entirely rely on Krishna because we cannot even blink an eye without Krishna's mercy. Mm -hmm. So, so Krishna should have, take, he should take our karma then. No problem, no Prabhuji. Okay, what, what we have, we wanted to enjoy life away from Krishna, that's why we are here. Okay. And birth after birth, what we have accumulated, you know, and then we come to that platform that we are Krishna conscious. So now we are beginning to realize who we are. We are asking that question. Okay. All I this think time, I, yeah. 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 So all this time we were in a, even, in, even right now we are in a modes of material nature. So even though you asking me question, I'm answering this question. Is my consciousness, you know, is answering this question. I'm not even able to move my lips or the words coming out of my mouth, or what you are explaining that I'm able to understand. Okay, then how do you explain free will, Mataji? Do we have free will? Yes, Prabhu, we have a free will because, you know, human also we are as an animal. The, all the animals are, you know, they eating, mating, defending, and uh, sleeping. So the, if, if a tiger, Hunt kills a cow and eat it. He's not collecting any karma because he's into that, that uh, what you call. He's 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 uh, in in that mode of nature that he's not creating any karma. But we have a higher conscious, so we know what is right and what is wrong, and that's where we have a free will. If I have a free will that I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to harm anybody. That's my free will, so I choose not to do that one. That's my higher conscious. But if somebody chooses to, you know, for their uh, consume their animal product or whatever, you know, they do. So they also have a free will, but they are choosing not to use that free will, but just to enjoy their sense gratification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your, your realizations and thoughts, Mataji. Hare Krishna. 
Sorry. Anyone, anyone else likes to share their understanding and realization of the soul neither does anything nor is entangled in the context of our daily lives, our daily activities, free will and karma. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, from our understanding, I think it's consciousness who does these things. Soul is like it's super soul who looks after what we are doing and recording in our karma, but it's consciousness who does these things. So where does this consciousness come from, Kirish Prabhu? Uh, it's like the in, inner, inner soul. Like we have like you know earlier verses we hear that we have two souls. One is like soul and one is super soul, super paramatma. Mm -hmm. uh, soul is the one who does this consciousness. And uh, you know we do all these things under our consciousness with along with this. Mode. But yeah, the, yeah, Krishna is saying the soul neither does anything. Krishna is saying the soul does nothing. Krishna is saying this verse: the soul does nothing. You understand what my question is, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, I think this soul is, from my understanding, it's that super soul which is just seeing what all living entities are doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your, for your thoughts on that. And anyone else likes to share the understanding? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Mamataji. A very minimum understanding, but I'm going to share it with you. Um, it's if, if we are part and parcel of Krishna and Krishna doesn't get entangled in the material modes, then we must have little bits of Krishna that uh, our soul doesn't get entangled in the material modes, but the body gets, whereas the body gets entangled. And the soul is the only thing that's eternal. So life after life, we carry the karma through our soul rather than to our body. Does that make sense? Yes, I, I, I can understand. But yeah, it's still the dilemma remains. The soul is doing nothing. And at the same time, the body is just matter inert. So, mm -hmm. so how to understand this? So the, what about the two bird analogy then? Because the, the super soul is watching the other bird eat the fruits. So mm -hmm. he's watching this, the body of the bird, not the soul. You know, the analogy of the two birds. Uh, well, it's a combination. I'll, I'll explain. I'll, okay, I'll explain. okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Look, let's, yeah, I'd like to hear what, what your understanding is. I was just going to see if like, it might be a couple of things like firstly a possible correction of the person which just previously spoke um isn't would it be the palm like it says our soul doesn't is doesn't do anything and uh, in this statement and the karma for example would that be first connected to our the like astral and subtle bodies it's not actually connected to the soul so the karma doesn't have really anything to associate with the soul so you could see the soul is not doing anything in that sense because it's not really even associated with our karma it's to do with the subtle bodies mm -hmm. and um then also like in the gita it says about the actual like size of the soul as well being like really small compared to the tip of the size of the hair mm -hmm. um so i feel like yeah our soul is yeah it's, it's not, nothing to do really with this material nature so much because we're we're here experiencing our karmas and everything but that's more associated to the subtle layers of the body and not necessarily with the soul. Okay. Like in your daily activities, uh, look, this whole day you've been doing some things, many things, right? I mean, you've been doing many things today. And when you were eating, when you were running or you were driving, did you ever think that you are the soul, you're not doing it? Someone else is doing it. How, how did you feel? How did you conceive of this? Can I say something? Yes, Mother Chi, one minute. I'll, I'll let Luke yeah. answer that and then I'll come back to you. Yeah. Um, I, 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 Krishna, from my understanding, it's the mind, you know, you carry impression from all your previous uh, births and mind carries all the impression. This mind is telling you to do this and that. Is, so the soul has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You, you, you. You, you're very close mind, to what, yeah. 
Mataji, you have explained what Krishna explains in the Srimad Bhagavatam yeah. to Uddhava. Yeah, yes. So, yes, it's, it's, it's the mind. And anyway, I'll, I'll explain. So, oh, but before I do that, anyone else likes to add anything? Or, or, or Luke, would you like to, to add any more before I... I, I <coughs> no, no, I want to hear what you guys do. Lord facilitates. Hare Krishna Okay, Nitai Mata, you wanted to add something. I just said, Lord facilitate our desires. Oh, yes. The Lord facilitates our desires. Mm -hmm. Would you like to expand a bit more? I'm just connecting to the uh, the talk. With, uh, I think so to uh, one Mataji just said that uh, before that, I think. So I, I feel uh, it, it is just it, just our, our desires, uh, so soul is not connected. It's mm -hmm. just our desire connected yeah. with the material nature. Uh -huh. So Lord facilitate, like whatever we are today is we desired some years back or some uh, some births back, life back. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And there was one more devotee wanted to say something, had something. Mataji, sorry, I, I, who was it? I forgot now. Someone who is muted at the moment. Sorry, Prabhuji, can I say something? Yes. yes. Prabhuji, as Krishna says in 15.9, that uh, our mind, mind is the one, it is because of mind, nothing to do with the soul, and it's mm -hmm. the modes of nature, and the mind along with the sense objects, so uh, that is how you know we are doing all the work of our karma and everything is accumulated. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I'll try to, to give some explanations now. Uh, firstly, I'll just read a few um, a few verses. Um, some of you all have quoted this verse already. Prakriti Kriya Manani, Gunai Karma Sarvasaha. Gunai karmani sarvasaha ahankara vimudatma karta hamiti manyati. The bewildered spirit soul, under the influence of the three modes of material nature, thinks himself the doer of activities, which are in actuality carried out by nature. So that's one relevant verse. Then there's another verse uh, in the 18th chapter, text 58, where Krishna says, Machita sarva durgani, durgani, mat prasadhat tarishyasi, atachetvam ahankaran, nashroshyasi, vinakshyasi. Krishna says, if you become conscious of me, you will pass over the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through the false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. Now, I, I wanted to read some verses from uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, where Krishna, as ex Lord Krishna has explained these, uh, these points very nicely, uh, and, and the method. Krishna's talking to Uddhava. Let me just move to one. So Krishna is talking to Uddhava, explaining to Uddhava the nature of the material world, uh, how the soul is entangled, well, caught up in material uh, attachments and so on. And then Krishna explains the whole process of the soul being attached and entangled. So Krishna says, and I'll read some of the verses. And he tells it in, in the form of a story of the Avanti Brahmana. So essentially there is the soul and there's the body. The body is different from the soul. They are two separate entities. But due to the false ego, they come together 
and the soul under illusion thinks itself uh, it's the body. But actually, the soul does nothing. The soul is a separate living entity. It's a soul is a separate entity. And the body is a separate entity. But due to the influence of the false ego, there is an overlap. And Krishna gives one example uh, in the 11th canto, chapter 11. And uh, I'll be talking more from chapter number 23 uh, for uh, this class which where Krishna speaks over. But in, in that chapter, Krishna says, chapter 11, although engaged in a body, an enlightened person does not abide by the body like having arisen from a dream. A foolish person abides by the body even though he is not engaged in the body like seeing a dream. And the purport is an enlightened person does not consider himself the body he inhabits. Just like when a dreamer forgets his dream body when he rises in the morning. A foolish person though thinks differently Despite being situated in the body as its controller, it thinks like in a dream. So all of us have experience of dreaming. And sometimes in the dream, we are a king. Sometimes in the dream, we are in love. Sometimes in the dream, we are being chased by a tiger. And all the time, you know, we are experiencing so many activities in the dream. But all the time, we, the soul, we are asleep. If someone, our partner or wife, husband, or someone comes and sees us, they just see us there and the soul is there. But this dream we are experiencing and we are engaged in the dream. And then suddenly we get up. And then we see, oh, it was only a dream. And then very easily we detached ourselves. None of us start to cry and lament. I was so rich, I was the king. Now I have no money. Oh, the tiger was chasing me. And I'm feeling so much of pain and fear. No, we don't think, we just understand it's the dream. We are the soul. We had a dream, but we know we're completely separate from the dream. And uh, we know we know that we weren't there. We weren't participating in that activity. We were there in our room where we stay, I don't know, in Watford or Hemel Hempstead or what, that's where we were. But this was all happening in a dream. So Krishna gives that analogy of the soul being different. And due to the influence of the false ego, we start to think that this is happening. Now I'll read a few verses. I'm conscious of time. Um, we've got five minutes and, and if we have to con continue tomorrow, we will continue. But uh, uh, these are very important verses. So I'm going to read, I can't put it on the screen because I couldn't get the beta base, it's down today. So this is Canto 11, chapter 23, text 49. Krishna says to Uddhava, persons who identify with this body, which is simply the product of the material mind, are blinded in their intelligence, thinking in terms of I and mine. Because of this illusion, this is I, but that is someone else, they wander in endless darkness. If you say that these people are the cause of my happiness and distress, then where is the place of the soul in such a conception? This happiness and distress pertains not to the soul, but to the interactions of the material bodies. If someone bites his tongue with his own teeth, at whom can he become angry in his suffering? 
So maybe what I'll do is I'll read the series of verses today and then tomorrow we'll dive a bit more deeper into it to explain it. Then the next verse, text number 51. If you say that the demigods rule the bodily senses, so Krishna now is giving a different possible reasons that people could give. If you say that the demigods who rule the bodily senses cause suffering still, how can such suffering apply to the spirit soul? This acting and being acted upon are merely interactions of the changeable senses and their presiding deities. When one limb of the body attacks another, with whom can the person in that body be angry? Next verse, text number 52. If the soul himself were the cause of happiness and distress, then we could not blame others, since happiness and distress would simply be the nature of the soul. According to this theory, nothing except the soul actually exists. And if we were to perceive something besides the soul, that would be illusion. Therefore, since happiness and distress do not actually exist in this concept, why become angry at oneself or others? Again, we'll explain. If you're getting a bit lost, don't worry. Just, just read it. And if we can examine the hypothesis that the planets and the immediate cause of suffering are happiness, of suffering and happiness, then also where is the relationship with the soul is who is eternal? Like some people say, everything is due to astrology. Everything, astrology means the influence of the planets on a person. So everything that is happening in a person's life, the acting in a certain way, the results they're getting, is all due to the constellation. And if that was the case, you know, then why is the soul being involved? After all, the effects of the planets applies only to the things that have taken birth. Expert astrologers have moreover explained how the planets are only causing pain to each other. Therefore, since the living entity is distinct from these planets and from the material body, against whom should he vent his anger? If we assume that the fruit of work is the cause of happiness and distress, we still are not dealing with the soul. The idea of material work arises when there is a spiritual actor who is conscious and a material body that undergoes the transformation of happiness and distress as a reaction to work. Since the body has no life, it cannot be the actual recipient of happiness and distress, nor can the soul, who is ultimately completely spiritual and aloof from the material body. Since karma, this has no ultimate basis in either the body or soul, at whom can one become angry? So Krishna is raising all of these questions himself to Uddhava, and then he explains. But I think I should, I want to do justice to the children who have made time. I'm going to pause here today. I'll stop here and I'll hand over to the children who want to do the presentation. And we will continue with our discussion on this very, very important subject matter tomorrow. Is that all right? And, and maybe if, if you have time, you can go and read Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 11, Chapter 23, and see if you can get any more understanding in the meantime. So uh, I'll now stop here and I'll stop my sharing. Are the children all joined? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna uh, Prabhu. They have all joined. Um, they have all joined, yes. All right. I'm going to hand over to you all now. Do I need to? Who should I give rights? Are you got, have you got a slideshow? Yes. I uh, Give me the presentation rights and Vedant will start off the presentation. So uh, Vedant, if you can turn on your camera, please. Thank you. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna, Vrindavan Chan Prabhu. So thank you, Vrindavan Chan Prabhu, for accommodating this presentation with the children. So just before the children begin the uh, start the presentation, I thought um, I just wanted to give a little bit of a brief idea. You must be wondering why the kids are presenting this. So if you remember, uh, I think it was day before yesterday uh, on Friday evening, I presented this idea where some devotees have also messaged me and those who must be thinking, how, how can I present Bhagavad Gita 
um, although I have the contacts, but it would be good to get some help. So I thought it would be nice if Vindavan Chand Prabhu on Sunday evening, where most of you can, can be available, allowed these children to show how they have been presenting to quite a few people already. And also um, to see the potential, because when you will see it for yourself, then you will think, wow, let me get some contacts and share it with the, the devotees. And these children can then present uh, Srimad Bhagavad Gita uh, to, the, to these people and to the devotees. So um, there are many devotees uh, who are very nicely heading this up. So one of them is Diptesh Prabhu, who's on the call. Uh, he's working with this wonderful team uh, who will themselves introduce uh, very shortly. And then we have few other parents like Vindarika Ramya, my wife. She's uh, also working with two or three devotees like how Diptesh Prabhu and so is Kalavati Mataji. And now we have a couple other parents who've come forward and formed the group and have started presentation and Bhakti Vriksha East London have also started the presentation. So now I hand it back to uh, uh, Diptesh Prabhu or the children. And then towards the end, I'll say a few words when the kids are have finished their presentation. Over to you, Diptesh Prabhu and the children. Thank you, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Um, so uh, Vedant, are you, uh, can you hear us? You turn on your camera, please. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to share the slides, and then uh, you can do the introduction. So. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Right. Uh, can everybody see the slides? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Vedant, over to you. Thank you. Uh, so, um, Hare Krishna, can everyone hear me properly? Yes. 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 We so, can hear you, Vedant. Clearly. So first of all, I'd like to thank you for joining me, to, uh, for, for giving your time to Sorry, Vindavan Chand Prabhu, I apologize. Could you mute everybody and the children can unmute themselves again if you don't mind just to get the background voice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vedan, you're on mute. So Hare Krishna, first of all, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. And we are grateful for your time. So my name is Vedant, and I'll be pre present presenting alongside with my friends, Rishabh, Rishab, Sridham, and Revati. So Rishabh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, Bo. My name is Rishabh. I am 13 years old, and I go to Avanti House Secondary School. Uh, Sridham, are you on the call? No, Sridham is not presenting. So uh, Revati, you can do the introduction. Thank you. Um, Hare Krishna, my name is Ravati, and I'm 13 years old. So since this is a very auspicious activity, I'd like to start off with some prayers. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Niti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gaudavani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Paschat Yadeshatarine, Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadara, Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we are part of the of the international Go Matsya team, and our prime goals are to preserve the Vedic culture through mass distribution of the Vedic literatures, and to educate people with spiritual knowledge. So as you can see. We have a treasure house of knowledge. We've got various books, such as the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Krishna book, and the Bhagavad Gita. So in this presentation, 
we will be discussing about the Bhagavad Gita. So what is the Bhagavad Gita? So th this literature is basically all the spiritual knowledge, so in, all the spiritual knowledge in India summarized into 700 verses. So the Bhagavad Gita is a conversation spoken by Lord Krishna to his friend Arjuna in the battle of Kurukshetra. So you may ask, uh, can you go? You may ask, why is this relevant for us? So while we may not be in a literal battle fighting, but we have an inner battle and which forces us to re-examine everything we know about ourselves and find ourselves becoming spiritual seekers. So you might say, there are many versions of this Bhagavad Gita I've seen. So why should I pick this one? So most of these, most of these other Bhagavad Gitas are written by other scholars, which only have an academic interest in the Gita. So they, not, they have not captured the essence of the philosophical and the devotional mood. And another point is the author of this edition, Srila Bhakti, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, was a pure devotee of Lord Krishna, and therefore he was able to e extract the real essence from it. So if we take an example, for, for example, you're, you're studying law or medicine, and you'll only study the book from a prominent author in, in that field of law or medicine. So the same principle, it applies to, the, it applies to spiritual knowledge. We will only read something from the prominent teacher, Srila Prabhupada. So many famous, fa famous people around the world has, have glorified and read the, Shri, the Bhagavad Gita. So the great Mahatma Gandhi had once said, when doubts, when doubts ha haunt me, when, when disappointments stare at, stare at me in the face, I see not, not one ray of hope on the horizon. I turn to the Bhagavad Gita and find a verse to comfort me. And I immediately begin to smile in the, in, in the midst of overwhelming sorrow. Those who meditate on the Bhagavad Gita will derive fresh joy and new meanings from it every day. The very intelligent Albert Einstein has also made a quote about the Bhagavad Gita. He said, when I read the Bhagavad Gita and reflect about how God created this universe, everything else seems so superfluous. Superfluous. And the great Henry David said, In the morning, I bathe my intellect in the stupendous and cosmo cosmogno philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita, in comparison with which our modern world and its literature seem puny and trivial. So now I'd like to hand over the presentation to Rishabh. Thank you for listening. Uh, I think it's Revati who should be doing this bit. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll take it from here. Um, there's uh, many doubts like, you know, this is this book only for Hindus, etc. Uh, which is not actually the case. This book is for everyone, no matter what color skin you have or what religion you are, if you're Muslim, Sikh, Christian. This book is for everyone because it contains truths which are very much universal. And they apply to every um, they apply to every creed of person equally. So the Gita provides answer, answers to many very uh, many philosophical questions as well, such as, who am I? How can I help this troubled world? And 
you know, do I have choices in life? Very, very deep questions. And there is, and the first question, let's take it for example, who am I? So the Gita, in the Gita verse, in chapter two, verse 14, there's a very beautiful verse, which says, um, Prabhuji, could you go to the next slide? which means that in um in essence it means that the body changes but the self or the soul is always the same and it also and this verse especially talks about this um transmigration of the soul and it's this it's in the same, it's in the uh, different, different bodies, but it's actually the soul. So the soul moves from one body to another. And what, and there are also the main, Prabhuji, there are five topics of the Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita as well, the five, um, and they, those are the supreme soul, material nature, time, and karma. So the supreme covers who the divine person is and but basically we call him God. The soul, um, the next topic is the soul, which explains what the soul is and the nature and the properties of the soul. Third, we have material nature. And this specific topic explains to us why, uh, why this world has been created with the gross and subtle components of it. Um, uh, then we have time. And it, it, the Bhagavad Gita explains how we all are bound by time. We cannot escape from the grasp of time. And finally, we have karma, which really emphasizes on, um, and gives us insight on what choices we should take, what choices we shouldn't take, and how our various different choices lead to various different reactions in the future, whether they're good or bad. Um, now, Rishabh can take over. I say thank you. So this illustration demonstrates to us and shows us the different layers of the gross and subtle bodies of a human being by using the analogy of the five horses. So the five horses or our five senses are uh, our ear, our nose, our mouth, our eyes and our skin. The reins are our mind. The reins tame the horses and similarly our mind tames our senses. The chariot, is carry, the chariot is carrying the passenger. So the chariot is our body and the passenger is our soul. The chariot can only be driven by a charioteer. Similarly, in our body, our intellect is driving us forward in the right and giving us direction. So this analogy teaches us that the charioteer is in charge of the reins and in our body, our intellect is in charge of our mind. The reins are in charge of the horses and therefore the mind is in charge of our senses. And thus, by feeding our intellect with the right type of knowledge, we can control our very untamed mind and senses and thus make the right choices. So this picture, so there's a very beautiful verse in the uh, Bhagavad Gita. Vidya Vinaya Sampanne Brahmane Gavi Hastini Suniche Nasvapakecha Pandita Hasamadarshinaha. So this shows us, this verse shows us that a person who has spiritual intellect sees around them everyone is equal. He sees God residing in everyone's heart. And thus he sees a sage, a lion, a tiger, a boy and a brahmana all as the same. He sees everyone as the child of God. So these books are for anyone at any age and anyone can read them. So these are a few benefits of studying the Bhagavad Gita. We learn how to become self-disciplined because one who is successful in life does not eat too much or eat too little. Neither does he sleep too much or sleep too little, as is shown 
in chapter 6, verse 16. In the Bhagavad Gita, in chapter 6, verse 6, it says that one who has conquered the mind, the mind is his best friend. But for one who has failed to do so, his mind will remain his greatest enemy. The Bhagavad Gita shows us techniques of how to make our mind our best friend. Children also develop divine qualities which will gradually elevate their consciousness. And they will learn how to read Sanskrit, which is the origin of all languages. So, as I would like, as I say, chanting a shloka a day keeps anxiety and stress away. So, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I sincerely welcome you to join our campaign of making a world a better place by distributing spiritual knowledge. Hare Krishna. So now I'll pass on to Divyanam Prabhu, who will continue on with the presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Rishabh, Revati, and Vedan for that wonderful presentation. So um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, what you saw is helping us to raise an awareness of this wonderful literature across the globe. So there are many children who are involved and my um, gratitude, my heart goes out to these children who have been not only studying Bhagavad Gita, but have actually taken up on their shoulders to now try and spread this message to other people so they can be benefited. So we have a Live to Give campaign going on uh, and the presentation was in line of that. We are encouraging people to order at least 15 Bhagavad Gita's if, if to start with, which they can personally distribute over Christmas and New Year. It's a great New Year resolution to have when you're distributing books to your friends and family. So feel free to order 15 Gita's with which you will get an invitation. Well, invitation is free for online Yagya, but your name will also be offered in the Yagya at the manor. Um, if you do it on 25th, but if you do it before 24th, then your name will automatically be offered in the Yagya, which is actually happening where the Gita was originally spoken by the Lord in Kurukshetra. So uh, there's a great benefit. The next package is the 25 Gitas, 52 Gitas and 104 Gitas, and there are benefits attached to it. I'm not going to go into the detail of this because all of you on this group have a complete idea from here on, but I'm just trying to stick how uh, you would see this presentation happening by Diptesh Prabhu or, you know, Vindarika or Kalavati Mataji, whoever is doing, you will see it in, in, in the same spirit. Uh, so uh, there are uh, 2 million uh, Bhagavad Gita's we are trying to distribute uh, all over the world through this wonderful campaign. And if you think you will, uh, you already have few Gita's and you rather give us that service, we are very happy to take that service. We have a wonderful Gita project, which we will tell you a little bit about shortly, which helps placing the Gita's across many institutions like prisons, school, colleges, universities. And each of these book gets a sticker in them with a follow-up so the people have an opportunity to connect with us and to be able to share, uh, you know, uh, to learn more about Krishna consciousness. And so, of, of, of course, throughout the year, there are many occasions, many festivals, um, you know, obviously Christmas and New Year is coming where you, you can have, but if you do like it to be distributed yourself, then there is a note section. When you go on the link, you can just mention, please do home delivery. <clears throat> So these are some pictures as uh, Diptesh Prabhu is very kindly rolling the slides. You can see that uh, how these books are going in the prisons. Then you will see books going into the motels. You will see the books going into libraries. Uh, and all these places, the books are very systematically placed. And this is the details again for the packages, which I have already kind of covered, but it just gives a good idea to tell people uh, what is happening. So this is a wonderful opportunity to spiritualize the world, especially in the current situation. As Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu always emphasizes that chanting Bhagavad Gita together, you know, brings that transcendental vibration into the ether, which the world needs it right now very much actually. So this is my request uh, to all of you. Uh, I mean, definitely if you haven't sponsored, let's, as, as Prabhu says, charity begins at home. So please sponsor us today. Just today, I want to share uh, Pratiba Mataji, from our chat Sangha, she sponsored 500 Bhagavad, oh, sorry, she sponsored 125 Bhagavad Gita's. She made a donation of 500 pounds. 
So thank you so much for that wonderful offering from your side, Pratibha Mataji. So now what we do is we normally conclude here, then we share the link. Uh, Prabhu, are there a couple more slides about the Shastradan or this is the, uh, yeah. So we have a Gita Jayanti context going on for your children. And um, I will personally send you a link so you can register your children. And it's only five pound entry. And within that is a personal copy for your child of Bhagavad Gita, which we will provide. The deadline, although it says 15th of December, we have extended it till 25th of December till Gita Jayanti. So you're more than welcome to take part. And please do take part. It's a very good competition. There are prizes to be won at the end as well. And on the next slide, we end here. And then I encourage them to, I ask them that please come forward and tell us how is it that you can help us what is your revelation after the presentation of children? So I know we are nearly 45, 47 of us. I can already see chat messages coming through, but I wanted to conclude by saying that I'm sure all of you will agree with me that when these children present it in such an organized and in a very, they're trying to give an essence literally in 15 minutes of the whole Bhagavad Gita, which is done so beautifully. And the whole mood is captured so nicely by these children. And these are the same children who are instrumental in distributing just over 25 Bhagavatam sets in the month of uh, Badra. Within like 25 days, they almost distributed one set a day doing 30 presentations. After th out of 30, they presented, you know, they managed to distribute nearly 25 Bhagavatam sets during Badra month. And these kids have now also inspired other children to come forward and help distribute Bhagavad Gita. And now the team is building up very nicely with these devotees and Matajis and fathers. They're all coming together and working together. So this is where I request you that if you think, oh, okay, I can explain a little bit. My, my advice is the people, if they see the presentation, they will benefit so nicely that they will get the essence of it. And normally hope people who are attending the presentation, they are pouring in uh, and coming forward and helping in many amazing ways by sponsoring or doing some service, etc. So now before I take, you can send your reflections by chat message, which I can read out, but I want to maybe request Vrindavan Chand Prabhu to say a few words, and then maybe Diptesh Prabhu can also say a few words. And then, uh, then maybe Vrindavan Chand Prabhu or myself, one of us can read your reflections from the chat messages. And I would like the children to please stay uh, here for five more minutes while we read these wonderful reflections, which are coming through. Over to you, Vrindavan Chand Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much to all of the glorious children who have come forward today to do this presentation. Uh, as we've experienced during the Badra campaign, there is certain, there's certain thing about children, their innocence and their purity. Uh, when they speak, it, it has a, a greater impact on people's lives. It touches hearts. So we saw from the Badra campaign how uh, well the children have done in terms of distributing this transcendental knowledge. And they are the future of our world. Uh, so it's really nice that they're coming forward. The more of these presentations we can arrange for the children to do, I mean, one way we can, we can become involved is some of us may be shy and hesitant to, to reach out to our contacts or even present Bhagavad Gita ourselves. But if we can reach out to our contacts and say, you know, there's a group of children that are really uh, a glorious example of, of how uh, to raise children and what the um, effect of Bhagavad Gita is on our lives. So invite them to a presentation uh, and then the children will present Bhagavad Gita to them. And in this way, we we can expand. I was reading today, uh, I'm not sure if you know, tomorrow at uh, 3, 1.33, it's going to be a really difficult constellation. For the first time, Jupiter and Saturn are going to be very close to each other. And it is said, whenever Jupiter and Saturn came that close to each other, there have been world wars and there's been great strife in the world. And astrologers are predicting that for the next four years, the world is gonna go through tremendous turmoil. So there is some very strong negative vibrations out there at the moment. Uh, we all need to come together. Those of us who are fortunate enough to have the gift of the Bhagavad Gita, we need to come together and really popular, popularize the Bhagavad Gita. 
So one is that people are going to go through this tremendous strife over the next four years. If we equip them with transcendental knowledge, these poor souls, they can overcome the strife. And then tomorrow, this verse we read today is very relevant. Tomorrow we'll expand a bit more why this important this knowledge is so important. And secondly, by spreading the word of the Gita, we, we create this transcendental vibration, a stronger and stronger vibration, which will counteract all of these negative vibrations that are present and current at the moment. So there was never, many people feel this, there was never a time where there was a need for transcendental knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita more than the current time and the times that are ahead of us. So in our mood of wanting to do good for the world, let's popularize, let's spread the Bhagavad Gita and let's engage our young, innocent and pure children in, in taking forward that message. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Vindavan Chan Prabhu. Diptesh Prabhu, would you like to say any a few words? Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, so thank you everyone for, for listening. I think uh, Vindavan Chandra Prabhu has covered very nicely uh, along with Prabhu, you. We are not able to see you. It will be good if the devotees can see your effulgent face, Diptesh Prabhu. <laughs> effulgent face, I wouldn't say that. Uh, okay, let me try. Sorry, I'm just in a... Okay. Can you see me? Sorry. Yes, Jai. Thank you, Prabhu. So, uh, I think Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu covered everything. Um, the only encouragement I would like to give uh, to, the, uh, to the participants is that I started off, I was very hesitant to reach out uh, when I started this with the children. And then I was thinking to myself that the least I can do is try. And, and that's what I did. I prayed and I tried. And... Uh, and, 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 and I reached out to friends and families and then left it out to the kids to do, do the wonders. And, uh, you know, it, it does work in the sense that, you know, when the, when, when the children can explain such nicely about the transcendental knowledge, but also the need for a change and the need for a change in consciousness, it has an impact on, on people. And, and, and that's why, you know, many, many supporters have come forward and, and, and help distribute Bhagavatam during the Badra. So all I would say is, you know, please take the next step uh, to reach out uh, to friends and family and, and leave it up to Krishna uh, and, and things will work. Thank you. Thank you. Krishna. Thank you, Thank you for your support. Thank you. So one thing I want to mention, um, something which worked well, well in Bhadra and a lot of you have also asked me this question that Divinam, can, can we present it to somebody who's sitting in Germany or America or uh, Australia? Now, you certainly can do that as long as you're taking the sponsorship. So it works very well. The only logistical challenge we are facing is about delivering of the Gita. But if somebody does want the Gita, especially if it is North America or India, I can try to meet that request. Um, but in the first instance, when you're presenting to somebody abroad, your relatives, your friends, and through the children, um, or even yourself, you can get the sponsorship because they can make the payment from anywhere in the world. Uh, so do that. But if they if they themselves don't have Gita and they would like it, then then reach out to me and I'll try to organize it in, in, in some way, small numbers we could. But sponsor, sponsorship wise, nothing stops us to go global and you can present it to your friends and relatives even abroad, actually. And the other thing I wanted to mention to all of you is I had mentioned day before yesterday that seven o'clock we are planning to have presentation every day. But still, if you find some friends or family who are not available at 7 p.m., drop a message to Vindarika, I've sent the number and she's already coordinating with Diptesh Prabhu and also other parents. And she will put the message in the group and whichever uh, parents or one of these coordinators who are, uh, who are coming forward with the children are ready, they will just present it because the children are now off the school until the, obviously our marathon is still 25th. So any time which you feel the parents are ready, absolutely. But 7 p.m. is a fixed time where we are getting ready to deliver the presentation. And if there are many more people, we will divide it across these groups and so that there is more personal aspect to it and two, two, three, three families can do it. So we, we can organize that. So that's my only request to all of you now. Please help uh, Diptesh Prabhu, Vindarika, and other parents to get the contact so that they can present and it can be counted towards your effort of reaching out to the 10 people. That's not a problem at all. We will just, uh, you know, for to encourage the children, we have a small goal of 500 Gitas. We will put the, the, the scores there, but it will be your effort which will be counted in terms of reaching out to the 10 people. So at the end, I just want to read out some encouraging messages to, uh, to these children. 
Uh, we have a devotee saying ama amazing insight, wonderful presentation. Thank you. Uh, Hema Mataji saying superb presentation. Today, I also played a video to His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj, uh, Bhima Prabhu from Bombay Prabhupada disciple and His Grace Vaishashika Prabhu of children presenting it and everybody loved it. And next weekend, we will try to share something with His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj and um, um, uh, Her Grace Mother Vishakha and His Grace Vaishashika Prabhu. They are giving us their association on next Sunday. So I'll invite all of you and we will share something more about the children that day. Um, we have Puja Mataji, wonderful concept, explained very well. Well done, children. Um, Umakant uh, Patel uh, Prabhu or Mataji saying, amazing presentation by our young children. So proud of them. Please keep it up with this wonderful preaching. May Krishna bless you all. Parth Prabhu, beautiful presentation. Well done. Yashwini Mataji, amazing presentation. Divya Gaurangi Mataji, wonderful presentation. So, um, Rita Mataji Hare Krishna, super presentation. Well done to the kids. Uh, we have, uh, I don't know, M, I think Mataji did tell me her name before, but thank you children for the beautiful presentation. Um, Santosh Mataji, well done to the children. Please keep up the good work. Uh, the verses from Bhagavad Gita were wonderful, excellent presentation. So thank you everybody for your, um, for your encouragement for the children. It means a lot to them. I can see all of them are here tuned in, listening to it and feeling a sense of gratitude towards what Prabhupada has given. And also now that your encouragement, thank you Shipra Mataji for your, for your message as well. One, thank you for the encouragement. So it's nine o'clock dear devotees, I do apologize. We have gone over by time. So I will also be having a session tomorrow evening at 6.30, just telling other people, devotees in our Sankirtan group, because now we have nearly 85 devotees who have joined, nearly 85, I think 83. Divya Gaurangi Mataji has very kindly taken this service to reach out to them personally. So I'll be inviting those devotees to giving, sharing some tips at probably some time tomorrow. I'll, I'll mention it on the group. And I will also present this idea to all the devotees if they want to book appointments with all these children, they can, if they're finding it difficult to present it themselves. So we will reach out and then I will request Vindavan Chand Prabhu. He'll also mention in his chat, chat session. So Vindavan Chand Prabhu, over to you uh, to say thank you to everybody. Thank you from my side for staying back. I do apologize for the overtime. Thank you everyone. All the wonderful devotees always <clears throat> coming to read Bhagavad Gita and also participating in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's thank you, and uh, Tomorrow, I'd like to just discuss a bit more in connection with the verse we studied, how the engagement in Sankirtan really helps us realize the import of what Lord Krishna is saying, that the soul does nothing. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you for a very, very nice class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.